an entitled Karen claims that the entire park belongs to her, which according to her, gives her the right to let her dog run around and nearly bite me and my dog. Things got so bad that I ended up calling the police and reporting this lady for being absolutely insane. And now I really hope I never have to deal with her ever again. Here's what happened. So this happened to me earlier this morning. I just moved to a new city less than a month ago and have been checking out the parks where dogs are required to be on leash. Now I have an older dog that's a little terrier and he's been attacked in the past by larger dogs. So random dogs running up to him off leash really freaks him out. It also makes me a bit nervous because I was also attacked as a kid by a dog. I was bit in the face and I almost lost a cheek and I had to have reconstructive surgery. But by and large, I love animals, especially dogs, because nine times out of 10, a dog's bad behavior is because of the owner. So I don't blame the dog. So at a new on leash park this morning, things are going fine until my dog and I walk over a rise and further down the trail about 25 yards where I see this lady who has two dogs who are both off their leash. The little wiener dog is going nowhere fast, but the German Shepherd sees me and my dog and immediately bolts for us barking. I picked up my terrier and I get him lifted over my head by the time the German Shepherd reaches us. I've learned over the last five years of having him that this is the easier way to keep him calm. Her dog is now right there. It's growling and trying to jump up and get at my dog. I loudly told the woman to call off her dog and she just stands there watching. Her dog makes another jumping lunge for mine. So I use my legs to push it away and I yell that she needs to call off her dog. Well, this apparently pisses her off because she just completely lost it on me. This woman starts screaming at me, calling me a jerk and told me to get out of her park and to stop kicking her dog. Now, for the record, I'm not kicking the dog. I'm just using my legs to deflect her dog each time he tries to jump up at my dog that, by the way, I still have held over my head. I yelled at her again, call off your dog. If it bites, I will call the police. She called her dog off then, but it took a few attempts before it stopped. And at no point did this woman even move from where she was. She just stood there until her dog finally responded to her command and went back to her. As soon as she had him by the collar, she started cussing me out again, telling me to get out of her park. I then took off back to the parking area with my dog and I got him in the car. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, is it finally over? But no, this woman also comes into the parking area and starts loading her dogs into her car while continuing to scream at me how I've just completely ruined her day, reiterating that it's her park and that she can do whatever she wants. And she peppered in several swear words throughout her entire tirade. I took the opportunity to snap a picture of her and her license plate and Google the local non-emergency line and dial. This makes her then visibly angry and she looks like she's going to start coming across the parking area towards me until I start talking into the phone about how I'd like to make a report about an aggressive dog and a woman in the park. The entitled woman then proceeds to get into her car and leave in a hurry at that point, still cursing and swearing at me, which definitely helped confirm the validity of my call. Now, just to add in, I decided to call the non-emergency line because while her dog didn't bite me, her utter lack of concern and her behavior coupled with her dog being aggressive makes me worried that this won't be an isolated issue. The park in question has a large play area for children near the parking lot and I would hate for this woman's entitlement to result in a child or someone else and their dog being harmed by her lack of desire to follow the clearly posted rules to keep the dogs on a leash. Now I don't like the stereotype, but this woman is the epitome of entitled Karens. She was in her late 50s, she was white, she had that haircut, and she was driving a new green Kia Sport. But this Karen either needs to get back on her meds or start taking some because the absolute conviction she kept screaming about the park being hers was completely off the charts. Yeah, that Karen was absolutely crazy. There's no way in the world that park belonged to her and the fact that she wasn't calling off her dog right away was insane in my opinion. Like, what was she thinking? She clearly has a dog that's not well trained or has any kind of, I don't know, discipline in its life and she's clearly not a good owner because the dog didn't come back right away. But also that's a German Shepherd. They use those dogs for police dogs. Like, come on man. She's got to be a better owner than just letting it run around and do whatever it wants. Like the original poster had to hold their dog over their head just to avoid the German Shepherd. That's insane in my opinion and honestly there's just no good excuse. So hopefully this lady gets in trouble in some kind of way because her behavior was completely unhinged. If you like Am I the Jerk you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for not paying for a road that my neighbors were trying to build next to my land. Because even though they tried to say that I would pay for one third of it, I put my foot down and I told them that no, I'm not going to pay for it. Causing them to get upset and call me selfish and greedy. Here's what happened. Okay, so here's the thing. A developer in our area went bust and plots of land behind and next to my land were for sale
sale for a pretty good price. So suddenly, I had new potential neighbors. One day, a guy appeared on my land, introduced himself, and told me that he had bought the land behind me and asked if I would agree to allow them to build a road on the border of my land. As the person who owns the land next to me don't want to go in the middle of his land, but he would agree to have it on the border of our two lands, as he could also use the same road as his driveway. So I agreed, and I told him, sure, but the only condition is that I can also use the road if I need to, to access that side of my land for whatever reason. So he has to do all the paperwork, and when everything is ready, we can make it official. We exchanged contacts, and everything seemed to be great. A few days ago, I got an email with an attachment and with plans and everything else, and the cost for all of this was divided to three, assuming that everyone, including me, would pay one-third of the cost. The future neighbor next to me replied that he would only cover part of the cost of what he would use, as he would only use about half of it. Well, I replied to his email by saying something like, I'm really sorry if there was a misunderstanding, but I will not be paying for the road because I don't need that road. I will allow you to build a road with my only condition being that I get to use it if I need to. Well, this guy called me up and he was very mad at me, stating that I was selfish and greedy and that I expected to use something that others built and it would be so expensive for him. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, I don't think you're the jerk at all. These people want to build their roads and they ask for permission and you said yes. Like in no part of that conversation did it ever include you having to pay for a single thing. Because if that was the case, then they honestly should have brought that up in the beginning. Like it's very dishonest for him to be like, okay, here's everything you need. And then suddenly you're finding out, oh wow, you're paying for a third of this road. Like, no, I didn't agree to that. I'm definitely not going to do that. Your gift to them was allowing them to make the road in the first place, not be responsible for it by having to pay for a single cent, especially because it's not on your property. So no, if anything, your neighbor is definitely the jerk because it really seems like he was trying to pull a fast one. Am I the jerk for not inviting my half siblings to my wedding, who I have literally not seen in over 20 years? Because right now my dad is calling me selfish and at this point I don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my fiance and I are having a small wedding with only about 40 people attending. But with everybody who would be going, I did not invite my three half siblings who live in another country on the guest list. I have never met one of them and it's been over 20 years since I saw the other two. At a meeting with my parents and in-laws to discuss the wedding, my father said that one of my brothers will be in my home country and that I should invite him to the wedding. I told him that my fiance and I did not include any of my half siblings in the guest count as we wanted to have a small and intimate wedding with people close to us. My dad then said that he was disappointed that I didn't at least invite my brother who would be in the country at the time of the wedding. I told him, I'm sorry, but if I invite them, I'd have to invite their spouses and possibly their children. That's an additional cost for eight people to an already tight wedding budget. Also, I wasn't invited to the weddings of my two married siblings, so I really didn't think that it would be a big deal. Well, when I said that, my dad got upset and said that if money was the issue, why didn't my fiance and I accept his offer to assist with wedding cost? He said that I was being selfish and that we are still family even though we didn't grow up together. So am I the jerk for not inviting them to my wedding? Because right now I really don't know what to do. No, I definitely don't think you're the jerk because you know what? This is your wedding day. You and your fiance decide who you want there and literally nobody else. You haven't talked to these people in what, 20 years? And suddenly your dad's like, oh, you've got to invite them. You have to have them involved in your wedding. And like you pretty much said it best. Why should they be involved in your wedding when you weren't involved in theirs? That literally makes no sense and there's no reason for you to reciprocate something you never got in the first place. So if you don't want them at your wedding, then that is honestly the end of it. Because trying to force something like that, especially on such a special day, in my opinion, is incredibly inappropriate. An entitled lady screams at me at a stoplight, demanding that I change the color of my Ford Ranger simply because our cars had matching paint jobs and she said that I was copying her. And I'm honestly still confused by this interaction because the way this lady was acting was truly insane. Here's what happened. Okay, so this happened at a stoplight a couple weeks ago and it still makes me giggle. I drive a 2019 Ford Ranger in a color called Hot Chili Pepper Red. It's an orange and red color that turns out to be a candy coat of orange over red. It's one of their expensive upgrade colors that's pretty rare because nobody wants to pay an extra $750 for it. And as a side note, I didn't either. I just got a deal on the truck. I happened to pull up next to a new Bronco in the same color and the lady driving was pretty excited, but it turns out her excitement was extremely pissed off because my truck was the same color as hers. According to her, it was a limited edition color that was exclusive to a certain package in the Bronco that year and she said that I was copying her. She accused me of painting my truck to copy her car and actually demanded that I change it back and she said this in a really screeching high-pitched voice. Now all of this was happening at a stoplight and I just sat there watching this grown adult lose her ever-loving mind over the color of our cars and it only later occurred to me that I really should have recorded the interaction. Now 
given that there's around 10 to 12 different factory colors in a maker's entire lineup, I'm not sure how she thought that this was a color unique to her. I know the higher end badges like Porsche will make a custom color for you, but this is Ford, the company that once offered cars in any color you like as long as it's black. So I feel like she's going to have a lot of problems in life because the way she reacted to my car being the same color as hers honestly is very weird. Yeah, that's a really strange thing to be upset about because seriously, what is she mad over? People can have the same color cars as somebody else. Like that is not that unusual. And for her to jump to the assumption that, oh yeah, you're copying her and you need to change it back right now. And it makes me think like what, like right now, like in the middle of this stoplight right now, or like, when do you want me to do that? So truly, I think some people are just born to try and complain about something in front of them. And this lady absolutely fits that description. Entitled bike riders in my city are making our lives a living nightmare by literally forcing people to walk on the grass as they have completely taken over the sidewalk. Here's what happened. I live near a busy street and it does have a bike lane which seldom gets used. Bicyclists just use the sidewalk and they will regularly run people onto the grass. Basically, if you're not using a bike, you're forced to walk in the grass next to the sidewalk since the cyclists basically feel like it's theirs. Well, I was walking to work and a bike rider decided that I wasn't moving fast enough. He then called me two names. He called me a fat pig and piggy. And you know what? I was really self-conscious most of the day because you kind of get to know locals and I could get a customer complaint. So I was upset and I wanted to call in sick because what if he shops at my store? I don't want my managers to know that I was being picked on just for my weight and size. This is such a common occurrence and I don't want to be seen as entitled, but I might have to just walk in the bike lane since it might be safer. And I think that I might be entitled since I wasn't moving fast enough and I was in the way. I just feel like maybe I shouldn't be commuting like this and I don't want to quit my job and go somewhere further away. I wish there was some kind of alternative route. So am I entitled for thinking I could use the sidewalk or should I just use the bike lane? I mean, literally, no one uses the bike lane. Are the bike riders being entitled for forcing people to walk on the grass? I'm honestly just so scared of getting hit by cars. And at this point, I really don't know what to do. No, you're definitely not entitled and you're definitely not the jerk. The sidewalk is definitely meant for people to walk on. And the fact that these bike riders are literally making people walk in the grass, in my opinion, is so inappropriate. And you know what? Next time someone says that to you, you shouldn't feel bad about yourself in the slightest. You did literally nothing wrong because they're the ones with a problem, not you. You're just minding your own business trying to get to work. And I know if I was in your shoes and someone called me a fat pig or piggy, I would be saying something back right away. Like that is not going to fly in my book for a second. You can't just disrespect someone like that, especially when that person literally didn't do anything wrong. So no, in my opinion, I think you should absolutely continue to walk on the sidewalk to work because that's literally where you're supposed to be. And if these bike riders don't like that, then they can go back to the bike lane, which is exactly where they're supposed to be in the first place. An entitled coworker gets exposed for not being an actual engineer after he freaks out on another coworker. And I'm honestly still baffled that this guy got hired in the first place. And I'm really glad that this guy ended up getting fired. Here's what happened. So this happened at work last year and I wanted to share it. So I work for a big tech company as a building maintenance tech. I do repairs, handle contracts, move office furniture, all sorts of things. But most of my coworkers are tech types with engineering degrees. Some of them are nice, down-to-earth kind of people, but many of them let their importance get to their heads. And the guy that I'm about to describe absolutely takes the cake. So we had a very, very nice desk set aside in an empty office. It was meant to be moved into the office of one of our bigwigs, but she was out of town for a few months, so we were storing it until we had her input on what she wanted removed to make room for it. Well, this low-level, new-hire engineer decided to set up shop in the spare room that we were keeping the desk in. He was told that as long as his supervisor was okay with it, he could stay, but that we would be coming to get the desk any day and to please not get attached. Well, the day comes to move the desk and this guy lost his mind. He was pissed off, yelling that he deserved that desk. He was an engineer and how dare we? My team just kind of shrugged and took the desk anyways. So he turned his rage onto the poor front desk guy for some reason and just went off. Well, the front desk guy doesn't take crap from anyone and got this guy's supervisor and HR involved, which opened up an investigation into Mr. Big Shot Engineer himself. And you know what they found? He lied on his resume. He was in no way qualified for his position. I guess a fresh set of eyes saw some kind of red flag that the hiring manager hadn't. So yeah, he was promptly fired. And it's amazing that he almost got away with it and decided to blow up over a stupid desk that he definitely did not deserve. Okay, this story is crazy to me because how do you get a job as an engineer if you're not an engineer? That hiring manager sucks at their job job. Like, holy crap, that is crazy to me. Like, sure, the way he reacted after having the desk taken away and him bragging about being an engineer was all like really kind of weird as it is.
this. But the fact that he even got hired in the first place is like blowing my mind right now. So yeah, his attitude was very wrong, and it's probably a really good thing that he ended up getting fired. An entitled Karen gets her iPad stolen, and then decides that it should be everybody else's problem, as she had a meltdown in a way that I've never seen before in my life. Here's what happened. So I work as an administrator in an elementary school, and last Monday morning, a very agitated co-worker came asking for help. Apparently, someone broke into a mother's car and stole her iPad while she was dropping her kids off, and that's really bad. Only I have access to the surveillance footage, so of course I agreed to help. I only need to know which car it was and where it was parked. So we both went out to look for the mom so that we could ask her for this information, and when we find her, she was yelling at a group of teachers, demanding to see the camera footage, and saying that she knew this school was horrible and just full of thieves. She was so upset she didn't want to talk to me and just left in a rage. And to be perfectly honest, I thought this was very understandable. I went over to her kid's teacher to ask exactly how it happened, and then everything turned really awkward. Apparently, the mom's car wasn't in our parking lot when it happened, and she decided to leave it on the street so that she could save time. She also left her car unlocked, and the iPad itself was in the passenger seat in a bright pink case. And to top it all off, she never activated the Find Me feature on the iPad. Now, because this wasn't in the school grounds, there was no clear camera footage. The best that I could find was her car in the distance with passing traffic blocking the view. I watched the whole 10 minutes, starting from where they got off the car to when she realized the iPad wasn't there anymore and came storming back. I saw several people pass by during that time, but at no point could the actual theft be seen in the first place. I did notice a blurry man take a longer time than everyone else walking by her car, so we pointed this out when we sent her the footage. Well, the mom was pissed. She said the footage was useless since she couldn't even see who the man was or where he was heading, but sadly, there was nothing else that we could do. She then threw a big fuss and even put a bad Google review, claiming that this school covers up for thieves, and apparently she wanted us to pay for the damages. Thankfully, it's been a week now and she has finally calmed down, but I'm just baffled at the entitlement of wanting everyone else to pay for her ridiculous mistakes. Yeah, that's such a weird way to act because literally that is nobody's fault except for hers. She left her car on the street and she's the one that let it basically get stolen out of her car. Like, how is that the school's fault? She's a complete moron for being like, oh, you're trying to cover up for thieves. And it's like, okay, but if you didn't have your iPad and a pink cover on your passenger seat, then maybe someone wouldn't have stolen it. Like, she literally put a target on her back and then tried to blame everybody else for it. Like, that's so weird, it's not even funny. So yeah, that lady was completely out of line and her attitude was completely unacceptable. An entitled Karen expects me to organize and basically pay for her entire charity that she's trying to run, claiming that because I already do this pretty much on a regular basis, I should be good to do it for her as well. And I'm honestly still blown away by her entitlement. Here's what happened. Okay, so years ago, I taught Zumba classes. When there was a tragedy or someone was in need, often a bunch of instructors from around town would get together and do a Zumbathon to raise money. I used to co-teach at a church and the classes were very well attended, like two classes per night, twice a week, with roughly 150 people per class. Every once in a while, the church would ask us to do a fundraiser, and we usually just announced ahead of time that we were donating that night's receipts to the church in case people wanted to contribute anything extra. Now, one woman called me because she was part of a walkathon or something like that, where you put a team together and the team raises money together to donate to the overall cause. She wanted me to donate the money that we earn from a regular class to give to her for her charity. Now, I explained that we were happy to do fundraisers for groups, but they would have to provide the venue and participate. We would promote their events in our classes and teach for free, but it was their event. Well, when I said that, she didn't like this at all. She figured since we do it for the church that hosted our classes, we should just do it for her too. I then pointed out to her that this was my job and this is how I earn money to eat and pay my bills. She knew my co-instructor was a teacher, so she said that she talked to her since she had another job. I asked her if she had already asked everyone else that she knew to donate a day's wage to her cause and she was not happy with me after I said that. And it honestly still astounds me that this person decided that the way to donate to her cause was to literally make someone else do all the work and sacrifice all of their time. Yeah, that lady was being super selfish and very entitled. The second you said this is your job should have been her cue to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me figure out a different venue or like a different option for my thing going on. The fact that she expected you to basically work for free and give your money to somebody else while also basically expecting you to organize the entire event was super entitled and so uncalled for. It also shows that she was not serious and just super lazy. She quite literally wanted you to do all the work. She wanted you to find a venue to find pretty much everything that she would need. And it all came from such a place of like, oh, well, you're already doing this. So why don't you do this for me? And you know what? Now that I think about it, I'm even doubting. 
plotting if they were a charity in the first place. It kind of seems like they just saw a good way to make money fast, and they probably thought, oh yeah, these people will do it for me. I can take the money and run. But I really love your response to this lady, because it not only proved your point, but it also brought this idiot back to planet Earth. When you said to her, oh, did you ask someone else to give up their day's wage for your stupid cause? And of course she's not going to be happy about that, because that's basically what she was asking. She was asking you to give up your money to her without her doing any work. And that, in my opinion, is completely unfair and super ridiculous. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.